Welcome to the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life with Vicki Washburn. Vicki and her guests will share their journey of the golden years and how they're creating a vibrant life. Topics will include family, fun, life, love, travel, and everything Boomer. You too can have the best of your vibrant life now. We are broadcasting from Global Voice Radio every week. And now, here's your host, Vicki Washburn. Hello, Boomers. This is Vicki Washburn. And today, I want to talk to you about the power of mindfulness. We've spent the last few weeks talking about our diet and foods that we can add to increase our health and to protect our health and help us to have a more vibrant life. So today I want to talk to you about mindfulness because it is such an important part of having a vibrant life. Our attitude really dictates so much of the joy or the misery that we have in our life. So the practice of mindfulness is a non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. It's not a new practice. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's a lot harder to practice for most of us than it should be. It's been engaged in by meditators and spiritually seeking uh, people for you know, hundreds and thousands of years. But what does it do do for us now? It's a new field that is being studied a lot. It has a lot of fascinating new insights, and it's attracting a lot of followers to relieve um, stress and just that those daily demands. Thousands of studies have been, have investigated the mechanisms by which mindfulness influences our physical, emotional, social, professional, and spiritual well-being. Here, I'm going to share with you just a few things that it affects and how it affects us and how it can benefit us. So the body benefits on a physical level, studies suggest that practicing mindfulness can lower inflammation, improve pain tolerance, and potentially reduce the risk of developing chronic disease like high blood pressure, heart disease, and obesity. A handful of studies also suggest that that the strength and length of our telomeres, the caps on our chromosomes, whose disillusion or shortening is associated with aging and disease may be enhanced by years, years spent invoking mindfulness through meditation. One study found that expert meditators, people who have been mindfully meditating for more than 10 years, had telomeres that were on average nearly one kilobase a unit encompassing about 1,000, how do I say this? Anyway, it lengthened them. The base building blocks of our DNA. Longer than those of people the same age who lead relatively healthy lifestyles but didn't regularly meditate. Now first, let's talk about the difference between meditation and prayer. To me, this is my definition. Your definition may be different. My definition of prayer is me speaking to God. My definition of prayer is me petitioning or thanking God, praising God. It's it's my voice speaking. Meditation to me is me becoming silent, clearing my mind, opening up to hear the voice of God speaking back to me, guiding me, instructing me, calming me. It's clearing the mind of 
those things that can just run us around in circles, those tapes that never shut up, um, the worry, the to-do list, all those things. When I meditate, I just sit in a chair with the sun on my face and try to clear my mind where all I really focus on is the sound of the birds, the sound of the wind, and I just get quiet. So that's my definition of meditation. Yours may be different. Researchers believe that having a regular reminder to keep calm is one of the core features of mindfulness, mindfulness's favorable psychological effects. Keeping an open, present awareness that doesn't devolve into judgment, paying attention to the breath and the body. We've talked about the breath before. This is an important part of meditation as well. If you struggle to get into a meditative state, just focus on your breath. Think about your breath. Take deep breaths. Breathe into the count of five. Hold for the count of five. Breathe out for the count of five. And just focus on your breath and your mind will clear. So paying attention to your breath and your body and observing, observing feelings and thoughts without clinging too tightly to any one of them help cue the nervous system to initiate the relaxation and rest response. That in turn helps to assist processes like digestion and cell recovery. And this has been proven through various studies. The relaxation response leads to a decrease in sympathetic nervous system arousal, which lowers heart rate and decreases blood pressure. These are all good things. When you get that slower heart rate and that slower blood pressure, it dials down activity in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. Uh, axis, a meeting point between our nervous and our endocrine system, the endocrine systems, the system that creates hormones, which includes the stress hormone. And it can decrease secretion of that stress hormone called cortisol, which results in a better rhythm and regulation of the stress hormone, mindfulness can be shown to accomplish this on a regular basis, and that will lead to greater health. The less stress hormone you have, the healthier you will be. Stress or if you stay in a constant state of stress, it will cause your body to develop issues somewhere hard to say where could be heart issues could be diabetes could be chronic pain and inflammation could be cognitive issues it just is not good to have that stress hormone in your body all the time so the next thing the next benefit we get is it gives us a mental edge because mindfulness can help us to both tolerate and regulate the intensity of our emotions, it can be a pathway to more stable moods, more positive outlook. Adults who engage in mindfulness tend to report fewer feelings of distress and symptoms of anxiety and depression. A comprehensive 2018 review of mindfulness intentions at work pub published in the Journal of PLOS-1 found that employees and managers who received mindfulness training reported fewer symptoms of distress, anxiety, depression, and job-related stress, as well as improved sleep and greater ability to relax than did their colleagues who went without the training. You know, this is, 
this is a big thing is to, you know, it clears your mind when you spend the time meditating and you can get that, that quietness in your mind, then things come into focus. So if we have anxiety about something, a lot of times it's because we cannot clearly see it. So when you take this time to practice mindfulness, then those things come in to clear focus that lowers our anxiety level. Um, when you lower the cortisol in your body, that lowers your anxiety level. Um, mindfulness also is a way of expressing gratitude. Gratitude is a very big part of mindfulness. Being grateful in even the trials and the lessons is a big part of mindfulness. Learning to acknowledge that even in this uncomfortableness that you are experiencing, you are learning something and being grateful for that helps to take the edge and the anxiety off of it because now it's no longer a bad thing, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing that you're learning this lesson at this point in your life. And I know that most of us, if you're listening to this, chances are that you are not a spring chicken. You're not a 20 something you are probably older and have lived some life. But even as we age, and especially I think sometimes as we age, the anxiety gets greater. Um, we have things we have to deal with that we've never dealt with in our lives before. We have no guidance on how to best deal with them. And this creates anxiety. So. If we can take time to quiet our mind and listen for guidance in that time of meditation, then it will lower our anxiety level. Um, the more that we are grateful for the good things in our life, the more good that comes to us. And as we walk through this mindfulness and this state of gratitude, God will send us the people and the resources that we need. Um, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, I believe in God. I believe that um, God sent his Holy Spirit to speak to me. I believe that when I meditate, Spirit is able to, I'm able to hear Spirit's voice because I get quiet so that he has the floor. And that has impacted my life greatly to be able to hear this voice of Spirit. So, whatever that means to you, then that is that's like a universal law you can't change it it is when you walk in gratitude it lowers your stress hormones it draws to you more things to be grateful for The more that we, the less that we indulge in bad for us behavior and bad for us thoughts, the better our health will be. The next uh, thing that mindfulness helps with is social skills. Um, if you want to lower your social anxiety and feel more comfortable expressing yourself around others, there's evidence that mindfulness can play a role there. While research has shown this 
to be especially true among adolescents with learning disabilities, experts speculate that adults can also benefit from mindfulness training when it comes to social skills. People who practice mindfulness tend to be more engaged in their jobs and come off as more authentic. They're less likely to be triggered by others' emotions, and they are more likely to report greater feelings of belonging and interconnectedness with others and a greater propensity than non-mindful folks for giving others the benefit of the doubt. The more mindful you become, the more empathy you have for others. So when somebody has an emotional reaction, rather than taking it personally, you can empathize with their feeling and possibly help guide them to a more um, mindful reaction. If you're more aware of what's going on inside of you emotionally and physically and attuned to what's around you, you're better able to function in any kind of context. This applies to all relationships, including the relationship with your spouse or your romantic interest, um, your children. It, it applies to everybody. Mindfulness is not the end all, be all to all your problems. Sometimes if your health is not great and you're doing breath work, it can cause you to be dizzy. If that happens, then it, it may be you're experiencing kind of an out-of-body experience. And sometimes that can be scary. But maybe it's something you should show gratitude for. Um, No matter what you practice, you should always um, be aware of your own limitations. Take it slow. I personally do my mindfulness sitting in a chair, my meditation, sitting in a chair, like I said, facing the sun. If I do that in the mornings and I try to do it early in the day, then my chair is facing east as the sun is coming up. If I do it in the evening, my chair is facing west as the sun is going down. And I do this at either time of sunrise or time of sunset. So I'm not sitting out there in the heat of the day. You may want to do yours on a mat in your living room. It can be done wherever you find the place that you can quiet your mind and quiet your body and breathe into that, that peace. You can spend five minutes a day, five minutes twice a day, you can spend 20 minutes. You can spend an hour. Whatever works for you. You can do it sitting in your car. Sometimes I do that. I just sit in my car and sit in the quiet with my eyes closed and just breathe. It's a very easy thing to do if you just take the time. My daughter has said to me over and over, I have the worst time, hardest time meditating. And I hear this from a lot of young moms because they've got a lot going on. They have a lot 
going on in their house. So it's hard to find a quiet time. So maybe that time needs to be during nap time when your children are all asleep. Maybe you need to go to your car to find that quiet place. Or the basement or wherever you can find that quiet space. So just to recap, here's some of the many ways that mindfulness is good for you, for the brain. Mindfulness has been shown to improve the ability to focus, regulate intense emotion, and cue our stress response system to settle down and relax. Our heart. Mindfulness may lower blood pressure and help slower, slow the heart rate to a healthier rhythm. Stomach. Meditation practices have been found to reduce GI symptoms like those found in IBS. Immunity. Some studies suggest mindfulness can increase the immune system function, likely because it reduces the stress signals that are known to lower immunity. Pain. Many studies indicate that mindfulness practices can help us tolerate pain better or at least suffer less from it. You know, think about it. Breathing. If you're a woman and you had natural childbirth, what was it that they taught you? They taught you a specific way to breathe to reduce the pain. They taught you how to breathe through the pain. Breath affects our pain tolerance so much. Breath affects our emotional response so much. When I have been very upset and crying very hard, one of the things that my counselor has done is said to me over and over, breathe, Vicki, breathe. Because what you do is you tend to hold your breath and hold that emotion down. And yet, if you breathe, you get it all out. So breath is such a very important thing. And I know we all go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to breathe to live. It's more than that. It's more than unconscious breathing. It's, it's breathing consciously. It's doing breath work. It's breathing into the meditation. It's breathing into the emotion. It's breathing into the pain. You can control all those things by your breath. Inflammation. Research indicates that mindfulness may reduce inflammation in our tissue and cells, which can help diminish many disease symptoms, as well as everyday aches and pains like headaches. Muscle tension. The progressive muscle relaxation techniques that characterize, that characterize some mindfulness exercises can work wonders for stiff limbs or that furrowed brow and that hunched up shoulder that happen as you weather the stress of everyday life. I know one of the things that I try to do when I am doing my meditation is to relax my shoulders and relax my neck and my back because this is where I carry all my stress is in my neck and my shoulders. And so I have to, I have to consciously think about relaxing my shoulders and not having them scrunched up around my neck, which is how I carry myself a lot of the time. So that is what I wanted to share with you today on mindfulness. I hope that you have gotten benefit from this. And I hope that if you don't already spend time meditation, doing meditation, that you will start this week, even if it's just for five minutes. Find a place that feels good to you and just get quiet. If you're like me and you like the outdoors, 
Maybe just stand there with the sun on your face and listen to the birds. Don't think of anything except the sound of the birds, the sound of the bugs, the sound of the wind. Just sit there and quiet your mind and listen to the breeze. I hope you all have a beautiful, vibrant week. You can follow me on Facebook at My Life Redesigned. You can follow me on Instagram at My Life Redesigned and on Twitter at Coach Vicki Wash. You can also find me on my website at VickiWashburn.com. I hope that you all have a beautiful week, a vibrant week, and that you will start your meditation practice today. God bless. Post up the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life. Connect with Vicki at www.globalvoiceradio.com. Tune in next week for another edition of the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life on Global Voice Radio, where your message and your voices are heard.